So we're 175 years since the arrival of blight in Ireland, but it still is the number one disease of potato crops um, going forward. We're still growing very susceptible varieties, so we expect to have a quite a lot of levels of disease um, if the weather conditions turn right. In terms of controlling the disease, we first have to look at the inoculum sources and try and get rid of those as much as possible. Now, whether that's ground keepers in, in uh, our volunteer potatoes and spring barley or spring wheat or winter wheat crops, or whether that's actually um, sort of discards in, in piles, etc. Taking care of those and making sure there's no blight inoculum moving from those into your crops is the number one thing that should be looked at from a disease control strategy. Then we can then look at actually the crop itself, understand what stage it's at and match the fungicide to that. We are fortunate that there's quite a few actives available for late blight control. Now, I say there's quite a few actives, but we can look at a potato crop at various different stages and some of these actives are better suited to early in the crop development and some better suited in late crop development. And that's one thing I would, be, uh, I would get familiar with in terms of what actives are available and their strengths and their weaknesses of those specific actives. I say that because we're going to enter into, uh, into rapid canopy growth in the next couple of weeks and there will be specific actives that will be required there. If we get weather that is conducive to late blight, as that crop uh, sort of grows, it is moving quite rapidly. So literally the leaves that are here today and you're seeing today, you may struggle to see them next week. The infection that arrives today, you may struggle to see that next week. So you will need to get some sort of a, an active that will have some sort of movement within that canopy. Now we can look at those that are truly systemic, such as the phenylamides. We do know, look, there's resistance to those. And the population in Ireland has resistant strains. So the recommendation would be that if you are using something like Ritamil, it is only going to be used the once and in a very tight interval. Other actives such as Zorvec would also be very good at this sort of rapid canopy in terms of getting movement into the, into the canopy to sort of prevent any infections that may be down low that you might not be able to see. Then later as we move into stable canopy, we can then change our actives to be looking at most of those that are translaminar, we'll be able to move between the leaf within the leaf layer itself however one of the things we do need to be aware about is the population that we are looking at trying to control and we've seen a lot of changes in the population over the last 10 years we have what we would regard as our older population in 8a1 that still is in the Irish population surprisingly it's there for nearly 30 odd years if not more at this stage we also then have our 13a2 our blue 13 I suppose as a lot of people might be familiar with our pink 6 these guys came in about maybe 10 years ago to fluctuate uh, depending on the season, but they are there. We're also now starting to see an emergence of a, a new wave of a sort of displacement in terms of our late blight population. We've got strains that are being referred to as 36A2, and this is quite an uh, aggressive strain that is uh, currently starting to dominate a lot of the continental European populations. It's displacing that pink 6 and that 13A2. And that is telling us something that actually this guy must have something different. It must be that bit more aggressive. Then we've also got a strain that's called 37A2. And we have picked this up in Ireland um, in, the last, in the last season. I think from Euroblight monitoring that was conducted, you would see that in the, in, the, in the map it is predominantly in the north of the country. However, we know it's there. This strain 37A2 or this uh, clonal lineage, it actually has fluazinam resistance. So it will impact on the efficacy that will be coming through from fluazinam products such as your Sherlan or your Volley. And actually care does, be, does need to be required when using these actives. So fluazinam based products would tend to be used earlier in the season such as the whenever before stable canopy that those couple of applications early on and maybe later in the season at the tail end as a, an anti-spirulant to prevent sort of uh, spirulation into the tubers and infection in the tubers there are alternatives available there I suppose uh, early season if you're looking for those couple of applications something uh, based on mancozeb is an alternative and then for later in the season we are of a number of different products such as a man based product or also infinito that will also provide that anti-spirulant activity and tuber uh, sort of control. It is important for us to actually get an idea of what blight is in the population. So if you do happen to come across some blight on your field, let us know whether that is your local Chagas advisor or local merchant so that we can get a sample into Oak Park and we can actually determine what uh, population is out there.